Hey guys. Hey guys. Um, I know we started reading through uh, Just Doomed by Morris Gleitzman. Um, the book sort of took a bit of a, a weird turn in the way that it was written. It just didn't seem too interesting. Um, I had a look through my bookshelf and I realized I bought a book because I thought it it looked a bit silly. It looked like it might be a bit of fun. Um, so we're going to start with a different book. It's called <laughs> Gangster Granny. Um, who's a by David Willi David Williams. In any case, Gangster Granny looks like it's a bit of fun. So we're going to read through this. We're just going to uh, same type of questions before, as before. Um, who are the main characters? Um, where does the story take place? Give me a short summary about the story. Chapter one: Cabbagey Water. But Granny is so boring," said Ben. It was a cold Friday evening in November, and as usual, he was slumped in the back of his mum and dad's car. Once again, he was on his way to stay the night at his dreaded granny's house. All old people are. Don't talk about your granny like that, said dad weakly, his fat stomach pushed up against the steering wheel of the family's little brown car. I hate spending time with her, protested Ben. Her TV doesn't work. All she wants to do is play Scrabble and she stinks of cabbage. In fairness to the boy, she does think of cabbage, agreed Mum, as she applied some last-minute lip liner. You're not helping, wife, muttered Dad. At worst, my mother has a very slight odour of boiled vegetables. Can't I come with you, pleaded Ben. I love ball what's-it dancing, he lied. It's called ballroom dancing, corrected Dad. And you don't love it. You said, and I quote, I would rather eat my own bogeys than watch that rubbish. Now, Ben and Mum's dad loved ballroom dancing. Sometimes, Ben thought they loved it more than they loved him. There was a TV show on Saturday evenings that Mum and Dad never missed called Strictly Stars Dancing, where celebrities would be paired with professional ballroom dancers. In fact, if there was a fire in the house, and mum could only save either a sparkly gold tap shoe once worn by Flavio Flavioli, the shiny tan dancer and heartbreaker from Italy who appeared on every series of the hit TV show, or her only child, Ben thought she would probably go for the shoe. Tonight, his mum and dad were going to an arena to see Strictly Stars dancing live on stage. I don't know why you don't give up on this pipe dream of becoming a plumber, Ben and think about dancing professionally, said Mum. Her lip liner, scrawling across her cheek as the car bounced over a particularly bumpy speed hump. Mum had a habit of applying her makeup in the car, which meant she often arrived somewhere looking like a clown. Maybe, just maybe you could, you could end up on Strictly, added Mum excitedly. Because, pre because prancing around is stupid, said Ben. Mum whispered a little and reached for a tissue. You're upsetting your mother. Now just be quiet, please, Ben. There's a good boy, replied Dad firmly as he turned up, turned up the volume on the stereo. Inevitably, a Strictly CD was playing. Fifty Golden Grace from the hit TV show was emblazoned on the cover. Ben hated the CD. Not at least because he had heard it a million times. In fact, he had heard it so many times... It was like torture. Ben's mum worked at the local nail salon, Gail's Nails. Because there weren't many customers, mum and the other lady who worked there, unsurprisingly called Gail, spent most days doing each other's nails. Buffing, cleaning, trimming, moisturising, coating, sealing, polishing, filling, lacquering, extending and painting. They were doing things to each other's nails all day long. Unless... Flavio Flavioli was on, TV, was on daytime TV. That meant mum would always come home with extremely long multicoloured plastic extensions on the end of her fingers. Ben's dad, meanwhile, worked as a security guard at the local supermarket. The highlight of his 20-year career thus far was stopping an old man who had concealed two tubs of margarine down his trousers. Although dad was now too fat to run after any robbers, he could certainly block their escape. 
Dad met mum when he wrongly accused her of shoplifting a bag of crisps, and within a year, they were married. The car swung around the corner into grey clothes, where Granny's bungalow squatted. It was one of a whole row of sad little homes, mainly inhabited by old people. The car came to a halt, and Ben slowly turned his head towards the bungalow. Looking expectantly out of the living room window was Granny, waiting, waiting. She was always waiting by the window for him to arrive. How long has, he, has she been there, thought Ben, since last week? Ben was her only grandchild, and, as far as he knew, no one else ever came to visit. Granny waved and gave Ben a little smile, which his grumpy face just about permitted him to reluctantly return. Right, one of us will pick you up tomorrow morning at around 11, Dad said, keeping the engine running. Can't you make it 10? Men, growled Dad. He released the child lock and Ben begrudgingly pushed the door open and stepped out. Ben didn't need the child lock, of course. He was 11 years old and hardly liked and hardly likely to open the door of the car while it was driving. He suspected his dad only used it to stop him from diving out of the car when they were on their way to Granny's house. Clunk went the door behind him as the engine revved up again. Before he could ring the bell, Granny opened the door. A huge gust of cabbage blasted in Ben's face. It was like a great big slap of smell. She was very much your textbook granny. And if I can get the picture, there's the picture of his granny. As we go through, we've got the, if I hold it like that, can you kind of see it while I go through it? No. All right. This is as good as I can get it, guys. Thick glasses, false teeth, hairy chin, mauve cardigan, used tissue, tucked up sleeve, a packet of Murray mints close by, white hair, hearing aids, smell of cabbage, floral print dress, and burgundy slippers. Are mummy and daddy not coming in? She asked, a little crestfallen. This was one of the things Ben couldn't stand about her. She was always talking to him like he was a baby. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Together, Granny and Ben watched the little brown car race off, leaping over the speed bumps. Mum and Dad didn't like spending time with any more than Ben did. It was just a convenient place to dump him on a Friday night. Uh, no, um, sorry, Granny, spluttered Ben. Oh, well, come in, she muttered. Now I've set up the Scrabble board for your tea. Oh, set up the Scrabble board and for your tea. You've got your favourite cabbage soup. Ben's face dropped even further. No, he thought. All right, that's the end of chapter one. So what I want you guys to do is name the characters in the book. Give you a clue because we just started. Ben. Mum, Dad, Granny, I want you to um, tell me where the story takes place. Write down a short summary. Tell me what's happening in this chapter. And then I want you to draw a short comic strip, some pictures, some words, some speech bubbles, telling me what's um, like uh, describing your summary of this chapter. But in any case, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.